When packaging a patient with spinal or hip injuries, you shouldn't strap them in with a harness which could aggravate the injury. Instead, you'll use a backboard and there are five important points to observe when you do. First, remember the backboards can be very uncomfortable, so always provide some padding, especially for long extractions. Pad not only the points of the patient's body that contact the board, but also provide support for arches like the lower back and behind and between the knees. If you have spider straps to secure your patient, that's great, but a bunch of Velcro does not provide an adequately secure attachment for vertical environments. If you have webbing with thousand pound buckles, use those, or you can secure them with regular tubular webbing. Securing the legs this way will prevent your patient from being ejected through the bottom of the board. Go through the board, cross over, back through and tie off. Here I did a water knot, but it's hard to cinch up water knots in this case, so maybe a square knot with overhand finishing knots would, would work better. Then again, if there's a little bit of slack, it's not the end of the world. For example, if I have two inches of slack right there, then those four crossings will divide it and each one, each one will only get half an inch of slack. Repeat for the torso with a small variation. After you go through the board, then go over the shoulders and back down. And this is what prevents ejection from the top of the backboard. And once again, tie it off. I think a square knot with overhands would do a better job here. With the patient securely fastened to the backboard, the next step is to secure the board to the litter. Simply tie a round turn and an overhand onto the rail that snugs itself up really nicely. Then do a clove hitch on the backboard and finish with another round turn and overhand. This takes about four feet of webbing. What I have there is five feet, so you see there's a little bit extra. Repeat for the other corner. Round turn, overhand, clove hitch. You might want to tie the clove hitch first in the middle, and then you can do your round hitch and over and around turns and overhands afterward on the ends. Might be a little bit easier. Now, if you don't have a bunch of small four or five foot webbings, you can you can use an eight foot or more length of webbing to do two corners at the same time. Use the same process, round turn, overhand on the rail, clove hitch on the board, and then you can continue to do clove hitches all the way around until you get to your finishing knot on the other end, which will be another round turn with an overhand. I don't know if the clove hitches in between other than on the backboard really that necessary since you'll take up all the slack anyway. I'll do this twice by the way I'll tie in two patients on this video on the next one you'll notice I use the single piece of webbing near the head and it's useful to go around the the bar on the head so that your 
webbing is not going across and cutting off some of the space and maybe interfering with the, where the patient's head is placed. Now it's time to add external lashing to hold the patient and backboard down in the litter. Girth hitch a length of webbing at the foot of the litter. Then crisscross, crisscross your way up. And here I do one too many crosses and I kind of run out of room to tie the knot on the end. So you'll see I adjust it a little bit. And we do this, we do this lashing because these straps that are attached to the cascade litter are not nearly strong again enough again to really secure the patient down. The buckles are wimpy, it's connected to fiberglass with two little bolts, so I'm gonna tie something to the rail, which is the strong point, to make sure it's secure. Now in this case, you see I do my crisscross over the knees and the chest, and this might be a good plan if there's a hip injury and you don't want to crisscross over something that's tender there. But in my next example, you'll see I cross closer to the waist and the torso, and that gives a much more secure lashing. But either way, your patient's tied to the backboard and with a couple crosses, he won't come out. Finally, when you're ready to attach the package to your raising or lowering system, you'll notice the patient has no harness to attach to the end of the main line. So in this case, you'll run the main line instead through the lowest practical point in the litter harness, maybe in the carabiners connecting it down there, and then attach your figure eight on a bite to the collection point. Same goes if you're on a vertical harness, attach it up on the, on the front, on the end. And you'll see with that tied in, the patient stays in pretty well. I'm making sure we don't crush his glasses there. And when I lift up, that backboard really doesn't move and he stays pretty snug against it. And let's try it one more time on his sister. So again, this is what you do if you have spinal or hip injuries and you don't want to use a harness, which could cause problems. We'll center her a little bit better. We'll go over the five, five important points. First one, add some padding. Next, use something stronger than spider straps. Shins, cross, crisscross over the thighs. And then together once more and tie the system off. Get it good and snug, but not uncomfortable. And I would recommend here a square knot with overhand tie-offs in place of the water knot where I do here in this video. Repeat for the torso. If this gets old watching this, you can skip ahead to about 12.30 in the video and we play it a lot faster without any commentary and you can also skip ahead to about 16 minutes and then we play it even faster also without commentary you can go through the middle of the board like i just did or make it come on the outside of the board if you have a larger patient for comfort go over those shoulders to hold your patient down You will want the arms attached inside the litter, of course, to prevent injury to them, but you don't need to do that at this point. At this point, we can leave it loose. We can, when we do our lashing, we'll secure those down. Now 
you know, if you have a short four or five foot piece of webbing, do your round turn with overhand on the rail, clove hitch on the backboard, and another round turn with overhand on the rail. And if you have a longer piece of webbing, start with the same thing with a round turn and overhand. In this case, I decided to do my clove hitch first, just to make it a little easier. Then my round turn and overhand, snug that up and pull the clove hitch tight. Then I add a few more clove hitches. I don't know if that's necessary in between. But what is helpful is the way I go over that bar to keep the webbing away from my patient's head. Another clove hitch there. Notice it's on the bar, so you think maybe it could slide and make it go loose, but after I attach it to the backboard, it really doesn't allow it to slide either way, so no big deal. And finish with a round turn and an overhand, and then I'm just tying off the rest of my excess webbing there just to get out of the way. Strap your patient in, but once again, we're not going to trust those straps to hold them down, so we'll add some webbing, some lashing. Do a girth hitch, crisscross. This time you notice I crossed it much higher, close to the waist and over the torso, so that seems more secure, even though the other way was adequate. And I finish with a clove hitch. That's it. So now we'll just replay this several times, a couple of times faster, try to anticipate what comes next before you see it and get it memorized. Good luck. <laughs>